Hi guys, and welcome back to another episode of Rebuilding Stockport. Brand new season, brand new me. Well, I mean, I'm not really, but brand new season. Now, you might be wondering about my attire, this uh, rather fetching jumper that I found in the cupboard. This is my serious business jumper because transfers are serious business, hence the glasses, which I actually can't see through because the light is blinding me, so I may have to, may have to ditch those for now. I don't have a transfer window hat, but I would like one, so I'm open to suggestions. Now, I've got my coffee, and we're going to go through some transfer stuff, and oh boy, have we got a lot of shit to talk about, believe me. Now... First things first, Bruno Bridges. You know I love showing off old Bruno. I've changed his name in the game to Bruno Bridges. Obviously, it's still a nickname, but I've just got rid of the Pontes bit. So it's just a bit more smooth. Someone said it was a good idea. So this is BB. You might also notice he actually has a number now. Uh, that's because we actually had to submit squads numbers for the uh, Vanarama National League this year. Now, he actually played for Portugal in the European Under-21 Championship in the summer. Not only that, he averaged a 7.43 rating and was man of the match in one of the games. I think it was against France. The kid is an enigma. But even more over than that, we've got a couple of new coaches, which I'll talk about in a minute. One of them is Ben Dixon, who is a fitness coach, but he actually has decent potential and uh, judging ability. And he actually reckons that Bridges is two and a half stars now at the age of 18. He is quite the player, and I really hope he's going to get a fair amount of game time for us this year, even though I have actually gone and signed another right back. I'll explain why in a minute. So, first things first, I did ask the club if they would let me turn professional, and they were not interested. So we are going to be playing as a semi-pro team in the National League this year, which I think is going to put us at a disadvantage. I don't know how many pro teams there are versus semi-pro. Um, hopefully it's a 50-50 split, but I really do think that's going to hinder us. Hopefully, if we can sustain ourselves in the league this year and just stay up, because that is, after all, our ambition, and that's what I've told the board, then maybe they'll let us turn pro next summer, because I, th I think we really do need to do that, guys soon. They still won't let me have a senior affiliate, but they have let me have a lower league affiliate, and that is Arnold, who I believe is a team based around Nottingham, if I'm remembering that correctly. So we do have them as a lower league club, and we can now send players out on loan to them, so we can at least get some of our youngsters some some game time, really. And in case you were wondering, uh, Blath Spleetons uh, came up with us into the National League, along with Dulwich Hamlet, and I can't remember the other team that came up, but it's cool to see Dulwich up there. Dazza the Rocket Stevenson did win player of the season, not that there was any doubt in that. I didn't win manager of the season, Weirdly, the Hereford manager did. I don't know if that's because they were overperforming so much. That must have, that had to have been the reason. They did do well. I think they came fourth or fifth in the end. Um, so he won manager of the year and not me, despite our incredibly good year. But yeah, you, you take the rough with the smooth. Swings and roundabouts and all that jazz. We were also the subject of a takeover this summer. I'm just trying to get this information out now uh, so we can get into the actual transfers and stuff. But that meant I got a transfer embargo for like one month of the window and I missed out on some good quality players, including re-signing Eriko Souza on a free transfer, um, which which really did annoy me because basically th they said they wanted to sell. We were put under an embargo for like a month. His contract expired with the club after he left us. My scout rated him then and the deal at, at 100%. I've never actually seen that. And I've seen that twice this summer. Uh, and I tried to put the bid in and of course we couldn't. We were under embargo. And by the time that we'd lifted the embargo, he'd signed for Northampton Town. Ah, oh, it's frustrating. Maybe he wouldn't have signed for us anyway, but he's just kind of player I wouldn't have minded bringing back. But do not worry, we've got players in that position now. But we do also have new owners, and this I think is kind of cool. We've been taken over by the Supporters Trust, so we're now a fan-owned club. I don't know if that's something that's programmed to happen in the game or not, because I've seen it, I've never actually seen that happen before to a club I'm managing. So if you do know anything about that, let me know. But I think it's really, really awesome that now Stockport County are a fan-owned side. I think it just makes this save even better. However, we did bring in Ben Dixon as a fitness coach, because a lot of our contracts expired for staff as well so I was able to bring in not only better coaches in the positions we already had but also some extra ones and he's got 15 fitness coaching which I think is really going to help us but he also knows a little bit about um judging potential just a little bit we also brought in David Collis to sort of boost our attacking coach not so great adaptability but with that 16 attacking and 14 defending coaching I could not really say no we also brought in Martin Woodmancy to be our new physio 15 physiotherapy couldn't really go wrong decent adaptability as well but the man I'm most interested in is this guy Steve Hetzer Hetzka? Hetzka. I don't know. I'm going to go with Hetzka for now. He's joined us as a scout. 64 years old. But look at that. A 15 and 16 on judging player and ability and potential. He should really be our head scout, to be honest. Um, but we might move him into a role perhaps next season as we shuffle things around a little bit. So, yeah, I was keen to bring this guy in when I actually saw that he was available. And now we have a really, really solid scout. So hopefully he can find us some gems. That's the plan anyway. Oh, yeah. And Harry Kane moved to Man United for £157 million. Right. What you're really here for. Transfers. We're going to start with the ones that came out, although I don't think there's many of them. Turns out there was actually none of them. So I've already shown you Jaden Thompson Brissett, uh, but he's here, of course. Uh, he's on £600 a week, but he's on a backup uh, wage. So he's not going to expect to play all the time, which is just as well, because I don't think he's going to. I think he's going to be a sort of second choice striker for us. He's still young, lots of potential. I'm all right with that. And most importantly, free transfers. Almost all of our signings have been free transfers, which means that we are doing very nicely financially. And contracts. I've 
offered a load of new contracts to a load of our first team players that I want to keep. And I've basically managed to make them agree to take less money. And I'll tell you how I've done that and link you to the video that explains it more later in the video. Because it's so important. Next up is Paris Magoma. He has actually signed for us. Um, I didn't really expect this one to come off because... When I originally tried to approach him, it wasn't happening. But then when we ticked over and we technically were a National League side and he still had no offers, uh, he was up for joining us then. And I just couldn't really say no. I thought we needed that extra option in the midfield. He's got great potential, great current ability as well. Uh, he's on a three-year deal as well. £900 a week makes him our highest paid player at the moment. And he does have a wage increase clause. And had I known what I knew about contracts now, I probably could have got him on less. But we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. He won't sign a new deal now, obviously, because he's got three years left. But I think he's a really solid player. And a lot of people reckon that he's got potential to go to sort of lower league of, uh, sorry, lower end of like championship level. So he could potentially be with us for a little while. Or we could sell him on and make some moolah. That's the plan anyway. Next up is Jake Cope, an 18-year-old who we've got, uh, well, technically from Bournemouth, but also not really technically from Bournemouth. Uh, he left Bournemouth in the summer, but we really needed someone on that right wing. But again, free transfer, backup contract, because again, we don't want people fighting for the, that sort of stuff. Potential abilities dropped a little bit since we signed him, but he's got decent current abilities. I'm not too fast. 18 years old, still time to improve. Could always sell him on anyway. Um, crossing is the one stat there that just perturbs me a little bit. His passing isn't great, but he's got good dribbling, good first touch, good technique. Uh, vision's okay. He's got good work rate and some excellent physical stats. He's fast. He's agile. He's got good stamina. Not the strongest, but he's also quite tall for a winger too, which does make me think that potentially back post crosses could work on the right-hand side as well. Just a thought. Next up is Josh Claxton. Um, now, I wasn't intending on signing myself a right back uh, because we have Bridges and of course we have Elliot Kebby. But there was some interest in Kebby and I wasn't sure if he was going to leave or not because as I mentioned in a previous video, Yeovil were after him. But when the opportunity came to sign Claxton, he'd left his previous club. I think he'd left his previous club. Well, did we actually have to buy this guy? Tell a lie. He hadn't left his previous club, but I signed him for 1.3k, so £1,300. But my scouts rated the deal as 100. It was this one and Eric Osuza that they rated as 100. And I guess it was because of the amount of money that it would cost us to actually bring him in. For 1.3k on £450 a week on a rotation contract, and I probably could have got that lower, if I, again, if I knew what I knew. Decent crossing, marking, passing, tackling, only five foot seven. good teamwork, vision, work rate, decent enough physicals, balanced personality, runs with the ball down the right because he's got okay dribbling, gets forward wherever possible, runs with ball often. I think he could be a solid option in that right-hand side, and I, I think it was just too good to turn down, really. That was my main deal with it. Next up, on a free transfer, George Danaher, who I believe is probably going to lead the line for us this year. Only five foot nine, so we have to adjust our style of play, and I'll tell you why and how we're going to do that soon. But he's more of a deep line forward. We've been using a deep line forward a lot, and I think it suits the way we play. But this guy's got decent passing. His finishing's all right. His first touch is solid. Good technique. His vision isn't bad. Teamwork, work rate right off the ball. Uh, reasonably decent physicals. He's quite pacey too, so it just gives us a different option uh, quite composed which could come in very handy and lots of potential too so and he's only on 325 pounds a week as a hot prospect for some reason he would take that deal i don't know why but he would and he's probably going to lead the line for us this year in the national league but we've got options and i love having options my god do i love having options next up is probably the most expensive signing of the summer and the earliest one that i actually made it's ibu Torre. does anyone else remember ibu Torre? i believe we actually had him at wimbledon i checked this on twitter and people uh, confirmed that we actually did have this guy with wimbledon i signed him to play back up to um scott duxbury he's on a little bit of money but again for this level it's still not bad He's a solid player on that left-hand side, and now we do have options there too, which is very, very nice. Next up, yes, they keep coming, is Cameron John, who we've got, uh, yeah, he played for Wolves up until last season, a centre-back. I said I wanted to get a young centre-back who was solid for this team, and this is that guy. Um, he lacks a lot of the technical abilities in a lot of areas. Like, let's not make any mistake. His crossing, dribbling, finishing, long shots, all of this is woeful. Um, but he's good at heading, marking, tackling. He's quite quick, and I think he'll do a job for us in the lower leagues. He's certainly not going to be able to go that far with us because he does have a lot of poor attributes, but I feel like he does the basic bread and butter defending stuff well, and hopefully he's got all right concentration and decisions as well. Positioning is quite good too. I think he'll actually be quite decent at covering our asses, basically, if we get into a little bit of trouble uh, with playing a slightly higher line. Now, I've he heard people say, you know, you conceded a lot of goals. Well, not a lot of goals, but a lot of the goals that we conceded, we were the best defense in the league, came from those balls over the top i agree but that doesn't mean that if we were to suddenly play a deep line that those goals would stop happening but you just concede different types of goals like playing a deep line does not suddenly mean that you're not going to concede goals it just means you won't concede that type of goals if you play a deeper line you're going to enable people to get much closer to your box which means crosses are going to be coming in left right and center you're going to be letting people take long shots which as we know can deflect like crazy and you're just giving teams a chance to pen you into your own half at the moment there's really only one or two ways to score against us ball over the top 
which will happen, but we can prevent it if we get better players, and set pieces. And for me, it worked for us last year, and we're going to see goals doing it this year. If it gets too bad, then we might need to take a look at things. But for now, I'm confident to keep going with it. And the last transfer is Jaden Anthony, who also played for Bournemouth. So both him and Jake Cope are former Bournemouth teammates. A right-hand-sided winger, better crossing, uh, which is what I'm more interested in, passing slightly better. He'll probably be the first choice player on that right-hand side, because again, he's got decent physical stats. If I had to predict now where we'll finish, probably about 15th. And that's totally fine. As long as we're not actually battling relegation all year, I will be completely happy. I've just noticed that Jim Gannon is now managing Gateshead. That's going to be great. When are we playing Gateshead? We already know what our next live comp's going to be then. It's going to be us at home against Gateshead. And Jim Gannon, if those of you don't know, is the current manager, I believe, of Stockport County in real life. I replaced him in the game. He's now managing Gateshead. We've got to do the Jim Gannon derby. But I made a key change in this game, and that was... Um, to set my goalkeeper's distribution to centre-backs and full-backs because we're no longer going to be lumping it long because our strikers aren't good enough to win the headers. So we're going to try and play it out from the back a little bit more. And I think it will enable us to actually get a little bit more possession in games and just not giving the ball away so cheaply from goal kicks and set pieces like that. And I think it's just going to help us that tiny bit. We'll try it for a bit. doesn't work. I've got other ideas. Do not worry. So as I said, lots of new contracts. De Mayo has the new contract, but there's also contracts on the table for just about every first team player you can think of. Most of which involve them taking wage cuts, particularly Jack Payne, who I think I've got down to like £300 a week from like 500, 600 or something, which is crazy. Um, so the way you do that, basically, is in these contracts, obviously you can't see his contract right now. So £550 a week. So with this new contract, he's going to be a backup option because he was fine to take that. £450 a week. The only differences are... Um, Landmark goal bonus, he's never going to get 15 goals for us, so we're never going to have to pay the 15k. Release clause, I don't think we're going to get relegated, and if we do, then, you know, it's a risk you have to take sometimes. You don't have to use this one, though. I don't think it matters that much, of zero. And also, wage after reaching international appearances, 1.6k. He's never going to get a game for England, so it's worth shoving that in there anyway. It means they'll take a little bit less money, and we can save ourselves money down the line. If you want to know how to do this properly and in much more detail, because... I'm butchering this. Um, Fox in the Box, of course. I'll put a link to his video about the contract stuff in the comments. Do go check it out. I'd rather you hear it from the from the Fox's mouth uh, than from me because I always make a mess of this. Most of the things you might accidentally learn from watching my videos probably come from someone like him or from Cleon's blog. So I'd much rather you give them the attention than me. So do go over and check out his channel and his a particular video on this. So they're obviously the favourites for this game, but not by much. I'd like to get off to a good start. I don't really mind if we lose. We're going to lose a lot more games this year. That's the thing we're going to have to get used to. Losing games is going to be something that's quite regular. But as long as we're winning games too, that's what matters. So as for the team, I picked a sort of first 11. As you can see, some of the players' match fitness, it just isn't there. And that's, that's my fault, but also because I thought the game did the same thing it did last year. It doesn't matter. We'll get that up fairly fast anyway. And I hopefully Dover have got similar issues, but I imagine they're probably a pro team, which does not help in the slightest. Um, this is probably my first choice lineup for now anyway, with Danaher up top, Stevenson on the left, but we do at least... Well, we don't really have options. I'm, I'm interested perhaps in Jason Banton. We might have a look at him too. Uh, he's a player I've got on trial at the moment. Anthony on the right, Magoma, Payne and DeMeo in the middle, slowly building up the partnerships there. Duxbury, of course, they've still got the partnership from last year. Cameron John, Ashley Palmer, Kebby, uh, we've got John Palmer, uh, Kebby at right back, and of course, Hinchcliffe in goal. I do need to bring in another goalkeeper, but do not worry, I'm on it because Ormson left, of course, as did Dane Smith. Unfortunately, still only five substitutes. Bit of a pain, but don't worry, we can put all outfield players in there. So we've got Claxton, Toure, Kirby, Thompson, Brissett, and of course, Bruno Bridges, who is good enough for the bench as well. Um, yeah, lots of other options though in terms of the team with Jake Cope, Turnbull, Keane, Gutteridge, Niall Bell. Lots of options there. Still going to get a bit more players in, though. Do not worry with the three grand budget that I've still got left. Oh, and the board also let me increase our youth recruitment again, so maybe we'll actually get someone decent in the Youth Academy this year. The team cohesion, although they do still, still seem to be listing, which is nice, isn't quite there yet, uh, and the, some of the dynamics have been a bit messy because we brought in loads of new players. Right, let's go. Um, are we playing the first game of the entire season? Oh, yeah, we're on TV as well. Two grand we got for this match, uh, so that's not too bad, considering the TV money is only five grand for the entire season. I'd settle for a draw on the opening day here. It's an away match. We're just trying to start off nicely. We've got a lot of the ball, like a lot of the ball. I have been on the lookout for another keeper, but also from this position, he should just distribute to the fullbacks. Uh, weirdly, he didn't that time for some reason, which is a bit annoying. Darren Stevenson looking across the pitch, and Jaden Anthony's all the way through. Can he score? Nearly takes a chance there. We have started this game very, very well. Magoma's free kick again. Oh, it's in the back of the net. Paris Magoma scores his first goal for Stockport. First appearance, half an hour into the game, and literally, we've not let Dover Athletic have a single shot. And what a goal that is from Paris Magoma. Dead ball specialist, perhaps. 1-0 Stockport. Yes. Well, as first halves go... What I would have wanted from our first half in a new division we'd just been promoted to, to be 1-0 up at half-time and dominating a game away from home in the first match. 
And I also feel like the squad isn't even fully properly fit yet. I don't know what Dover's is like. I um, don't know if we can even see that. I'm happy with the first half. Yes, we've taken ourselves a set piece to get the goal, but we did that a lot last year as well. I want to see some open play goodness, though. magoma has been scythed through, but he's won the ball back instantly. Brilliant stuff. Doesn't matter. Ball over the top. Oh, no. There's your goal, isn't it? Allen, over the crossbar. You're going to get those chances. <laughs> They're just going to. We've got to be careful. Well, one. Here we go. Dryden Anthony. Look at the space for Darren Stevenson. He's through. Can he square it for someone, perhaps? Oh, what a strike that was from Stevenson. He nearly rocketed that in the top corner. Right, I'm going to make an earlier sub purely because we've not got the full fitness on the players just yet, and I want to make sure that we get the best out of that. Although, weirdly, the, the match fitness is improving during the game. I'm going to get on Thompson Brissett for Danaher to change things up there. And also, Bruno Bridges on for Kebby. I don't want to start messing with the defensive line because I want to give us five or six games of just playing it consistently before we start messing. If we concede goals from it during that, then we'll concede goals from it during that. Going to get Ibu Torre on for Duxbury to just give us a bit of fresh legs on that left-hand side. We're going to need that coming forward. Oh, look at the space for Jaden Anthony if he makes the run. Jack Payne, perhaps. Thompson Brissett's got the space now. He's in behind. Can he score? It's a tough angle. Scores? No. Oh, in fact, oh my God, Tim Schmoll, of course, was on loan from Dover last season, wasn't he? Playing against his former club. Bridges ball in. Palmer at the back post. Knocks it down. De Mayo! There we go. Wrapping up the match. A deserved win for Stockport County on the opening day. Dover, uh, Dover County. Dover Athletic nil. Stockport County 2. We've created some open play chances and we've scored a couple of set-piece brilliances. Lovely ball in from Bruno Bridges. Knocked down beautifully by Ashley Palmer and De Mayo does what he does best. Beautiful strike. 2-0 and we're going to win our first game in the National League. Yes. Come on. Keep the, keep the clean sheet, guys. Don't let it drop at the last minute. Payne does well to clear it. And there we go. Dover nil. Stockport County 2. A win on the opening day. Not much more you could ask for. We played fantastically well. Um, could have had a couple of open play goals. Thompson Brissett. There's chances there. And got what we needed from set pieces in the match, which is just perfect. Really, really pleased with that. Kebby didn't have the best game. Bridges made a couple of mistakes too, but it didn't cost us. So... First game up in the new division, we've won 2-0 away from home, uh, a mid-table kind of team, but it gives us two, three points straight off the mark, confidence, everything like that. And we're playing newly promoted Blythe Sp Blath Spleetons in the next game. We've got Orient in there, Macclesfield and Wrexham as well. Um, Off-camera games, of course. Next up's going to be Gateshead, though. And then we're going to do Gateshead easily off camera, but then we're going to do a double live comm of Hartlepool and Salford City, uh, because I think that'd be kind of fun to play against probably the best side in the league. Anyway... If you've enjoyed this episode, and I hope you have, we're up into the National League, playing reasonably well. Hopefully we can get a couple more wins under our belt and look up rather than down this year, but at least consolidate. Then drop a like on the video, that'd be special. And if you're new to the channel and this is the first video of mine you've seen, because I know some of you that, you know, you might drop in and out and come back for these episodes, then hey, stick around for a little bit more. It's fun. Hit that subscribe button and join us some more of these every single day. And I'll see you guys in the next episode for the Gateshead game. The Jim Gannon Derby, if you will. I'll see you guys soon. Thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.